feasibility study is underway right now. So we hope to be in production in 2023 uh, with that project. And then on the other side is the exploration potential, which we think is incredible throughout the area. Many companies have worked in this, this area of Newfoundland and Labrador, but not really drilled a lot of meters. So we see a lot of potential along strike and also at depth. Hello and welcome viewers to Assay TV. I'm very pleased to introduce Garrett McDonald, who is President and Chief Executive Officer of Maritime Resources. A maritime are exploring highly prospective assets throughout Newfoundland and Labrador in Canada. And we're going to be hearing all about those and getting an insight on the projects to date. So Garrett, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. No problem. So could you give us an overview of the company journey so far, just the headline of the company? Yeah, so Maritime Resources is a Canadian gold uh, exploration and development company. Our headquarters are in Toronto, but our main assets are all in Newfoundland and Labrador on the east side of Canada. Mm -hmm. And we've been working on a development plan for the Hammerdown Gold Project over the last couple of years. And this is the key asset uh, that we have in the company. It was a former high-grade mine that closed around 2005, uh, operated by Richmond Mines with a head grade of about 15 grams per tonne. So it was a very high grade mine and that gold prices at the time were about $300 an ounce. So in today's environment, it's, it's certainly much, uh, much higher. And what we've been noticing though, is that there's a lot of exploration potential left uh, around the old mine site and in the area in general. So the company has got kind of a parallel uh, work program underway now. We do want to develop the Hammerdown project again and bring it back into production. And we think that's going to happen and it looks very good. Uh, from what we've seen so far. So we're working through um, all the technical programs, the environmental programs, um, feasibility studies underway right now. So we hope to be in production in 2023 uh, with that project. And then on the other side is the exploration potential, which we think is incredible throughout the area. Many companies have worked in this, this area of Newfoundland and Labrador, but not really drilled a lot of meters. So we see a lot of potential along strike and also at depth on the targets that we've noticed. Um, so we're underway now with another drill program. Uh, this kicked off here recently. We had some good news out uh, this week on, on a new discovery that was made there. So we have a lot of work to do to follow up in this area, but it's, uh, it's very exciting. Very much so. Um, great, so let's focus in then on Hammer, the Hammerdown Gold Project, the flagship asset. Um, you seem to be at an advantage in that it is a brownfield site, you know, a former producing mine, so you've got some advantages there and that will really help you get this into production quite quickly as you said for next year but what are, this, what are the next steps and what are things that investors should be looking out for these key milestones as you work towards getting it back into production this year yeah so i guess some of the uh, some of the key milestones i'll just re recap a couple that we've made over the last couple of years and then I'll talk about the ones that we're we're coming up with um, you know, really over the last couple of years, we started with a, in 2020 with a, a rescoped project uh, that looked at an open pit and underground combination, including the Orion deposit that is uh, next door to Hammerdown. And so the PA study was done in 2020. Um, it looked like a very attractive project for us. Not a big project, it's maybe 50 to 70,000 ounces a year, but a uh, very high grade and a low capital uh, to start up. So it looked like a great project. We then took a couple more steps to de-risk uh, the whole idea by completing a lot of infill drilling, all the technical and environmental programs, really building up that social license that we, that we as an industry need, uh, no matter where we are. Mm. Um, so we've got a great relationship there in the Newfoundland with the communities and the uh, provincial government. It's been great to work in, in this province. We also picked up uh, an asset that was pretty key for us. It was the Nugget Pond Gold Circuit. And it's the same gold circuit that was used to process ore from the Hammerdown mine in the past. Uh, pretty standard uh, carbon and pulp gold circuit, very high recoveries, around 96, 97% historically mm -hmm. on Hammerdown feed. Um, so with that asset, and uh, we also got through the environmental assessment already, which is, you know, it's a big thing. It's, it's, the, it's the big yeah. step you need to, to trigger the rest of the permitting. Those two uh, activities were completed last year. And now we're into the feasibility stage uh, for the project. So we're working on that right now. Um, 
After that, I think the, the next steps really are for us two, two things. One is the remaining permitting that'll have to happen, uh, essentially as your development and your closure plan that will get sent to the province. We're very fortunate with Hammerdown as a brownfield site. Um, we have no real uh, federal involvement in the project. It's a provincial permitting um, exercise, essentially. And, you know, that's pretty unique in, in our industry. And it's a smaller scale project. So in, you know, going to a mill that's already built and permitted and it's, it makes things a lot easier. Um, we also have to raise the money to build the mine. So project financing will be the next step. Of course, we want to see, you know, both of the, the permitting and the financing steps require information under the feasibility study to really understand what, what will happen. So that's key for us is the study. And then the other things that I think will start to fall into place uh, throughout the summer and the, and the, and the fall. Excellent. Yeah, it's quite clear the path forward. Of course, every step is going to be present um, its own amount of legwork. But let, let's focus in um, on actually the working capital that you have in place. You know, and you mentioned sort of raising money to to build a producing mine. Um, always challenging for a junior mining company. But where, where do you stand at the moment? Yeah, our working capital right now is about four million uh, Canadian. Some of that is flow through, about a million dollars of flow through, right. uh, which is dedicated to our exploration program. Um, we also announced earlier this year that we closed a deal with Nomad Royalty Company to sell uh, a package of royalties we had on other assets throughout Canada. Uh, so we're still holding uh, some shares in that company and we'll probably liquidate those you know, in the second quarter sometime to raise some additional cash. And you know, for 4 million working capital, that gets us, I think, to the the point of the project financing. So we can get through the feasibility study, do a little bit of diamond drilling that we're, we're doing right now, and then it's time to look at the project uh, financing. Excellent. Uh, just a point on some of the sort of permitting and some of the environmental aspects coming up that you're gonna to have to um, um, bring the project in line with. Obviously this is a producing mine, so it's an advantage there, uh, but that was back in the 1990s. Uh, how much is the, environment changed um, in, in terms of um, permitting and um, obviously the, the province is very pro mining um, but there's a lot more focus I guess now on the ES and the G elements of what a junior mining company has to do compared to perhaps back then. Yeah that's uh, is true you're, you're correct about that and I think no matter what company it is or what jurisdiction that you're in the, the ESG focus is is in you know, increasingly important and as it should be. Um, as a development company, uh, one of the first things that we did is, is get to know the community that we're working in. And we developed a very good relationship with the town of Kings Point and the town of Springdale, and also the, you know, the regulators and the, the provincial government. Um, as you mentioned, the very pro-mining. My, uh, my takeaway on, on what I've seen so far is that as long as you're, you know, you do your homework correctly and, and you're not cutting corners, that, you know, the communities and the, and the province will, We'll get behind you and that's a really uh, great thing because i think we can do these projects um you know efficiently and safely respecting the environment at the same time and working with the communities to to so that they are part of the design process uh, throughout the, the project yeah. certainly yeah because newfoundland um yeah certainly more, very bullish on, on new mines and new exploration um obviously I know it's Mouth and Gold, the neighbouring project, but they've recently had a news flow of some permits come through. So ostensibly, uh, yeah, th there's going to be the support for, for the right kind of projects. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, mining is an important industry to, to the province. And as I said, I think they're, they're, they're behind you. If, if, you're, if your plans are done correctly and you've, you've engaged with the right stakeholders and worked together to come up with the right uh, development plan, and, uh, you know, I, compared maybe to the old days, that's, you know, that's, that's different. And, but I, I think this is important the way we've, as an industry, uh, started to do this more and more. And it's just the way it should be done. Um, you know, we're looking at things, uh, you know, at, at Hammerdown, they're maybe uh, starting to see some, some innovation creeping into to the business as well with uh, looking at something like ore sorting that has been around for a while. It hasn't been adopted, uh, I would say, not, not that much. But it's a way of, uh, you know, basically concentrating your mineralization and in, in keeping dilution in the material that doesn't carry any grade, any uh, valuable metals, 
at the site. So if you're trekking ore to a nearby mill, which we will do, right? well, then that keeps some of that waste product, that volume at site, so you don't have to truck it. Therefore, you're not using as much, many trucks, as much fuel. You're not generating as much carbon. So those are things that have a, a big environmental impact on the project, and, they're, and they help us at the same time financially. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we are looking at and uh, working with the province on that as well. Yeah. Excellent. Very good. Okay, for investors watching, let's talk about some of the exploration activity that you touched on earlier. Uh, tell us about uh, the new discovery and some of the uh, exciting activity there. Yeah, so on the exploration side, we've been um, very busy over the last couple of years, uh, kind of starting really with consolidating the land package. It was when we first kind of came in as a team here about three years ago. Um, we could see the potential in the area, but it was you know, a bit of a checkerboard of, of uh, you know, land packages that we brought together as one, and a pretty big land package of that. It's about 400 square kilometers. And throughout that land package, we're seeing some very big fault structures that are coming through. And that's, I think, controlling some of the mineralization that we're seeing. Um, most recently, our little drill program that we started looking east of the Hammerdown project for, well, for more hammer downs, to be honest. Yeah. And over the years, the junior companies that have worked throughout this area, including Richmond, who was operating the mine back in the, you know, the early 2000s, you know, did limited drilling. They, I think they, they explored maybe with uh, prospecting some trenching in the areas, but not a lot of geophysics and not a lot of, um, not a lot of drilling. So it's, it's a big land package that just hasn't been drilled. Our most recent press release that we had this week started uh, looking at the eastern side of Hammerdown. And you can see, when you look at the, some of the images there, that you can see the trends that are carrying on east of Hammerdown. There's a big couple of big folds that are happening there. So we think there's a lot more potential for Hammerdown style mineralization uh, out there. And in fact, there was the one, I think it was the high, the highlight hole that we had in the press release was 150 grams over 0.2 meters. You know, that's a vein, brand new vein that looks identical to some of the veins you see at Hammerdown, but it's over a kilometer to the east of the project. So, although narrow, uh, very high grade, and it's just an indication to us that there's, there's more to the system out there, and that we do need to do a lot more drilling to hopefully find additional resources that could be added into our Hammerdown mine plan. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd, I'd read in some of the materials that it wasn't just gold, it was base metals as well. Is that part of the strategy? Is, is that something that you're going to have some a little optionality for upside for, for investors? Or the, the strategy is obviously mostly gold, but you're having to do base metals as well. Yeah, we're, our strategy is gold. That's our focus. Um, but we are in an environment where we do, we do encounter uh, VMS deposits throughout the, the land package. So we will get elevated copper and zinc and sometimes lead, silver. Um, oftentimes the gold zones are... Uh, just sitting in behind those, so they're kind of uh, in the area. So we'll look for whatever makes sense for our, for our shareholders. Of course, if we find something that's you know base metal rich and it's attractive, that's a good thing. But we're not uh, we're not going to look away from it. it. It's all part of the same land package. I think we do get those VMS deposits uh, coming in with the gold. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, in this particular environment of metals prices and um, supply chains being redefined all over the world. It's definitely, uh, yeah, sensible to be uh, looking at as well. Um, just wanted to turn to Quebec, uh, where you also have a strategic asset in La, uh, La Palette um, and you're putting out a resource on this soon, I've read. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, the Lac Peltier property is, is an asset we picked up uh, last year as part of the Venega Pond transaction with Rambler. Mm -hmm. And this was an asset that really hasn't seen any work since 2010. Right. Um, it was a, you know, a nice high grade historic resource on the project. It's got over three kilometers of underground development. It was bulk sampled a number of times and it's sitting right in the heart of uh, the Abitibi camp, right in Rouen Naranda. Right. So very close to the Cadillac Fault, just to the south. Um, our, I guess the, the largest project that's in development near our asset is Yamana's Wazamak project about uh, a few kilometers to the west. So it's a really interesting asset, I think. It, uh, you know, it, it hasn't been looked at in a long time. Um, the deposit is, is open at depth. What we're doing right now is we're just refreshing 
the resource and the technical report, trying to bring it up to, to today's standards, breathing new life into this asset that I think has been forgotten about uh, for a long time. At these prices, it certainly is very interesting. Uh, the fact that it's uh, located right in the heart of the Abitibi camp is interesting to us as well. So yeah, we're gonna put out a new resource on this in the second quarter. Um, what we're interested in doing, I think, with the project, uh, given our, our focus, which is the Hammerdown project and our exploration in Newfoundland, you know, it's potential for us as a small company that we might look to, to have a partner on this one or even to sell it. It's just, you know, as a small company, we can't be everywhere at once. And our focus though has to be on, on developing Hammerdown uh, effectively and bringing that mine into production while continuing to explore all through our projects in Newfoundland and Labrador. Yeah, absolutely. That makes perfect sense as a strategy and, and good to communicate that to uh, the investors and everyone yeah. watching. Indeed. Okay, well, Garrett, thanks very much for a really detailed catch up on the development story at Hammerdown. We really look forward to catching up again on Assay TV to hear about that and the news with the other exploration plays. So thank you for talking with Assay TV. Yep, thank you very much.